Well, do you have any doubt now uh, about some of the more seemingly outrageous things that you have heard your humble and obedient servant here say over the past couple of years about this gangster fascist in the White House? Do you have any doubt now that he um, has every intention to remain as president for life? Now, Chris Saliza writing at CNN this morning also brings this up. He, he points out that for months, uh, for months now, the orange bastard has tried to raise questions in his cult members' minds about the accuracy of the 2020 election results. Right? The accuracy. And he's been suggesting, of course with no evidence, that there was some sort of effort to steal the election because of the uh, likelihood of increased mail-in balloting due to the Trump pandemic. But last night, last night, Trump threw all the subtlety out the window, refusing to say that he would accept a peaceful transition of power this fall. Now, as Saliza points out, Trump's inability to say he would accept the election result is bad, like really bad. His full quote when he said, eh, in response to the uh, peaceful transition of power question, is actually more damning and telling about this thug who currently leads the country. Now, most of us understand because we learned this in, what, fourth grade, fifth, third, sixth, somewhere way back. But the defining moment, truly, truly, the defining moment in the health of our form of self-government is the peaceful transition of power from one administration to another. From George Herbert Walker Bush to Bill Clinton, from Bill Clinton to George W. Bush, from George W. Bush, and, and so on and so forth. The peaceful transition of power, where the people who voted for candidate A and must watch candidate B be inaugurated, accept candidate B's validity to assume the office because of the process that we have in place here. As faulty as it is, I understand that. I always feel like I have to stipulate all the bullshit that goes with our system of electing a a president uh, of, of the country because it is encrusted in bullshit. I understand that. But after the votes are counted, if the votes are counted, the person who won one. Now, that didn't happen with Bush and Al Gore. It didn't happen with Trump and Clinton. And there are technical reasons that we can fall back on or judicial interpretations that, that we can fall back on and say, well, OK, but which to me is bullshit. I still say that Al Gore should have been president. Hillary Clinton, whether I like her or not, it's bullshit. Hillary Clinton should have been president. So we've had two Democrats out of the past three presidencies have their elections stolen from them. In plain sight, right in front of us. There's no, there's nothing surreptitious or, or cloak and daggerish or in the shadows about this. It was done right in front of us. And Trump is taking it one step further. He knows the Republicans in the Senate will do nothing, nothing to hold him back. He saw that with the vote on impeachment. He knows that he has every single one of these Republican senators totally cowed. I don't care what they say. I don't give a shit what uh, um, uh, Susan Collins or Lisa Murkowski or uh, uh, any of these people say. 
And as far as what Mitch McConnell said this morning, please, this lying little son of a bitch, are you going to believe him? Anyway, here's Trump's full quote. When asked about the peaceful transit, whether or not he would accept the results of the election, he said this, quote, well, we're going to have to see what happens. You know that. I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots. And the ballots are a disaster. We want to have, get rid of the ballots, and you'll have a very trans, you'll have a very peaceful, there won't be a transfer, frankly. There'll be a continuation. The ballots are out of control. You know that. End quote. Okay. So if, if, if you want to, you may give this filthy pig the benefit of the doubt when he said that when he said get rid of the ballots, he's referring to mail in ballots rather than, you know, all the ballots. Even though, consider what this son of a bitch is saying. After saying he can't commit to a peaceful transition of power, the orange bastard essentially says that if mail-in ballots are eliminated, then things will be, quote, very peaceful. Because there won't be a transfer, frankly, there will be a continuation, end quote. Hello? So, as Salissa points out, if Trump is guaranteed to win, then the election is all good. Because he won't need to give up power. He'll simply continue to hold on to it. Now, I know, I, I, I know a, a lot of people, his, his real, the, one, the ones who really fillet this bastard at, at, given any chance. I know what they're saying. They're saying, um, you know, just remember the oodles of times that Trump has joked about serving more than two terms set out in the Constitution. Right? Hey! Like last month. He said, quote, we're going to win four more years, and then after that, we'll go for another four years because they spied on my campaign. They should get a, we should get a redo of four years. Spying? Oh, yeah, that, that bullshit that ricocheted around in the brain of his effed up daughter and his two brain scrambled sons and the enablers on, on, on the Fox sewer. Oh, yeah, right. That, that spying. Yeah. Then earlier this month, he said this, quote, And 52 days from now, we're going to win Nevada. And we're going to win four more years in the White House. And then after that, we'll negotiate, right? Because we're probably, based on the way we were treated, we're probably entitled to another four after that. End quote. Oh, yeah, he's real jokey about shit like that, right? Oh, yeah, okay. This, this is what his chief fellators want you to believe. Oh, he's just joking. Ah. Now, excuse me, I have to take care of my Lord and Master. Oh, So if you add it all up, we now have, in the form of this orange bastard, a president who is on record saying, A, he won't commit to a peaceful transition of power unless, B, all mail-in ballots are eliminated because, C, that would mean he would win again, and D, has repeatedly raised the possibility of staying on beyond even the eight-year term limit on the presidency. Oh, he's just joking. Oh, come on, Malloy. He's just joking. And here's the other thing. Trump knows that we can't, quote, get rid of the ballots, end quote. Now, again, we're assuming he means the mail-in ballots. First of all, Lots of these mail-in ballots have already been cast. Early voting is underway in several states, as you know, and they can't be uncast. <laughs> That's Saliza's way of putting it. And second, there are lots and lots of people, more Democrats than Republicans, if the polling is to be believed, 
who plan to vote by mail in order to avoid waiting in lines inside polling places uh, while we're still in the middle of this raging Trump coronavirus pandemic. So what the orange bastard is doing is creating the perfect excuse to never concede. He's saying that the vote will be fair and he will agree to a peaceful transition of power if there are no mail-in votes, which he knows literally can't happen. They're already mailed in. And so if he loses, he already has his fallback plan in place. So in, in, in this orange bastard's rhetoric and and what he's injecting into the minds of his Christian screaming pale faced cult members is the acceptance of mail in ballots means the entire election was a hoax and a fraud. That's what he's putting out there. And that's what his fillators are sucking up, so to speak. And Why should he admit he lost an election that was rigged against him? Right? Oh, my God. So in his comments last night, Chris Eliza writes, Trump did more than just reject the idea of a peaceful transition of power. He said he will not accept the election unless he wins or unless an impossibility, the rejection of all mail-in ballots is carried out. And if you don't think that's a uniquely dangerous position to hold for the continued strength of our democracy, well, as Solicit points out, you're just not paying attention. Yeah, but it's much more serious than that, isn't it? Huh? It's rather, uh, I'm, I'm not criticizing Chris Solicit. I happen to thoroughly agree with 99.9% of what Chris Solicit writes at CNN.com. But I'm saying that's an awfully kind of weak way to put it, Chris. This son of a bitch is determined from day one to hold on to the presidency no matter what he has to do. Hey, True Seekers, while we're practicing safe social distancing, it's a great time to treat yourself with some seriously delicious, responsibly sourced coffee. Awaken to pleasure with River Moon Coffee. But don't take my word for it. Here are two recent reviews. Quote, we sell River Moon Coffee at Marine General Store, and I can't seem to keep up with customer demand. Not only is the coffee excellent, but the philosophy behind it, the careful sourcing and constant research to bring a quality product to customers, appeals to the hearts of our community. End quote. And here's one from a fellow Malloy listener. Quote, I love, love, love this coffee. I buy it in five-pound bags. I especially love the Truth Seeker blend. End quote. Sounds like they're planning ahead for the apocalypse. Anyway, support a progressive small business that supports this program. Go to MikeMalloy.com and click on the River Moon Coffee link on the main page. You'll thank me later.